Afternoon guys, just back with a real quick video. I sort of mentioned the other day in my other video that um, I'd make one about a question I was asked, so I'll, uh, I'm going to get into that. First I want to say thanks to the guys who have subscribed, we really appreciate it, um, and the people who are commenting. Got some really positive discussions going on, and uh, and that's what we like to see. So yeah, if you if you want us to if I can make a video about something, or you got a question you want it directly answered, just pop it in the comments down below, and I'll do the best I can to answer it. And that's what I'm going to do today. So someone said to us that there's no way one of these batteries can ever pay back, right? And like that's such a broad statement, you know that uh, you just can't you can't broadly say that. It's a bit silly. Um, I sort of put it into three different scenarios, right? We've got um, scenario A, like I'll just, I've actually done some fucking slides here so I can talk to people about what's going on. So you've got three scenarios. One is you just want to offset the power that you've got in your house, right? Like you're not super worried about power outages. Maybe you, you know, like you live in an area where there's a hospital nearby and they take particularly good care of the, of the power grid there, who knows? Um, but you've got solar, you're getting a, a few bucks back. The thing is, if you're getting seven cents back or three cents back for the kilowatt that you're sending back into the grid, um, you're, you're losing money on that because that's money that you know, you're paying 28 cents, for example, that's what I pay. So I'm gonna, I'll make the assumption that everybody's paying the same as what we pay. Everybody pays like a grid service fee. Um, what you're sending back into the grid, um, if you've got your know, sort of standard sort of five, six kilowatt system, will never really cover your expenses, right? It'll give you a small discount, but it will never cover your expenses. So you're better off pushing that into a battery. So this battery cost us $21,000 to build, right? With the other equipment notwithstanding. I can tell you now that, let's have a look. The current savings that this battery's given us over four years, now, and bear in mind, I'm saying four years, but we all know the battery's only two and a half years old. What we've saved by having batteries is 18,000 bucks. We didn't save as much um, in the in the first two years because we had the other batteries here. We had a smaller system at the time. There was less solar panels. So what I'm what I'm estimating is that it's a four year payback window to pay for the battery, or it's four and a half, five years to pay back the battery. Basically, it's worked out to forty five hundred dollars a year. That's not bad, uh, and the last two years are the highest performance. So actually, we expect that to be slightly better. We, we expect it to be closer to five thousand dollars a year because we use a lot of power. So. Circling back, I think you've got three scenarios. The first scenario, which I'll pop up on the screen, uh, scenario A is you want to offset your power, um, but you, you don't really care about outages, right? Now, this is a really small battery. You'd figure out how big this battery is by taking your power bill. You've already got solar on your roof. You're, you're going to take your power bill, figure out over a year roughly what you send back per day. And then, then we're going to add 30% to that, and that is the size of the battery, right? The thing is... Um, yeah, well, that, that's one way to calculate it. The other one is to calculate your nighttime usage. So if you're, you know, like, oh, I want to get through the night, then it's whatever your units consumed average per day is, not, not thinking about your solar, uh, plus 30%, and that's how big your battery could be. Now, that would re may require you to increase the size of your solar system to be able to charge that and realize that benefit. But what you effectively want to do is use 70% of the capacity of the battery every single night, uh, and that battery per kilowatt, every time you use a kilowatt out of it, is worth the value that you would have paid the, the grid provider for, right? So in our case, it's 28 cents. So every time we pull a kilowatt out, if we get through the night every night, and we got 30, 30 kilowatts, well, you know, that's like, yeah, so 10, uh, 10 times 28 is $2.80. Um, so we end up with like, what, close to nine bucks, right? So like $8 fucking 40 or something. So $8.40 a night, that's significant, right? It's a significant saving. So you, you calculate that up that over a year or like 100 days, you got 84 bucks. So, you know, it, it adds up pretty quick, right? That's the most effective. That is the most cost effective battery you can have. All right, now let's say um, scenario B. Scenario B, you want some off-grid capability, right? You live in an area where you've got shitty power and like you want to save some money, but you also want some, some uh, you know, like either oh, power failures happen, right? I've been watching what's going on in the States. They've had quite a few catastrophic events recently where been, power's been out for a while. Um, we've had three or four power failures in the last year. So like our battery, we love our battery. Um, I would assume that most people would gear their system to sort of last at least three days, right? So we'll, we'll call it three days of autonomy, as in it's really overcast, horrible weather outside, I want to get through three days. So in that scenario, using the same method that we used last time, we would take the solar capacity 
that we generally feed back into the grid. We'd times it by three, then we'd add 30% to it, or just times it by 3.3. That's how big of a battery you would you you could potentially put in. If you did it the other way and you were willing to make your solar system bigger to to uh, you know to cope, then you would times by three your consumption average based on your power bill, and then add thirty percent to that, or just times it by three point three. So the, the the downside of that is that because um, the battery is now bigger, you're not going to cycle it as regularly at night time, right? So like you're not going to use you're only going to use say thirty percent of the battery at night time, um, and the battery is going to cost you significantly more. So your payback window becomes significantly larger. Then you put yourself into our situation. Actually, we're we're even worse. There's a, there's almost a D situation here, but our situation, um, situation C, which is where we're off grid. We are off grid, but we also there is a grid connection on the property, and the grid connection on the property has its own solar and a ball pump on it. Now the house is not attached to it. Um, but we still pay for that service. So we're actually in a really crappy situation where we've paid for 5.5 kilowatts to be on the house and we want to get a return on investment on that. So we're leaving the grid connected for the time being. I can assure you as soon as uh, that has paid for itself, we'll, we'll probably turn that link off. Um, but in the meanwhile, so this is the worst scenario to be in, right? It, when I say worst scenario, because you're effectively, you're responsible for your uptime. We're at risk because we only have a single inverter, right? That's bad. Don't mind my cables. Um, that's really bad. Like everywhere else, we've we've added in redundancy, right? So there's three battery shelves. If we dropped a cell in one of these shelves, they're actually good for 50% of their capacity because they're a 2P arrangement. Um, so the shelf doesn't become completely useless, uh, just it, it'll, it'll cut its charge capacity out because it's like, you know, voltage will spike on a single cell or voltage will drop on a single cell and that's not ideal. But we've got redundancy by virtue of the fact that one of these packs could die, one of those BMSs could die, one of our chargers could die, like one of our solar inverters could die. Um, this is our single point of failure, which I'm not super happy with, but when we bought this, this was quite expensive. This was 5,700 Australian dollars, like for the kit. And that was just too expensive for me to add redundancy. What I'd like to do now is actually parallel this with another one, so that if one of these failed, it was a quick reconfigure and I could run on a single inverter. Um, because as soon as your battery is mission, mission critical, you're going to pay a lot more for it. But that also means it's going to take a really long time to pay back. So our payback window, given what we've spent, not including the previous set of batteries, is close to eight years. The battery will pay itself off in four and a half, five years, uh, and then we've got to make up the difference on that. So, uh, like, given the convenience of it, for us it's worth it. Um, is it cost effective to put a battery in? Yeah, don't do what we did. Unless, you know, unless you're fanatical and you're you know, going to wear an aluminium foil hat like I do. Um, you get particularly good at folding out, like, you know, getting rid of the wrinkles in the alfoil after a while. Um, you don't have to do what we did. Like this shelf now, there's, these are 32 kilowatts each, these shelves. Um, or 30, sorry, what are they, 30.7 or something. Um, you could do this shelf for about 7,000 bucks. That's, that's more than what most people need. You don't have to be a pig and use what we use. But anyway, I want to I want to directly answer the question that was asked. So let's go through. So our house is delineated. I'll flash this up on the screen for you. Our house is delineated by two different systems, right? We've got the grid feed-in system, which is solar just feeding into the grid. The other side is the house, which has got its own solar as well, that that pumps into our inverter, and then the inverter feeds the house. Um, so all of our measurements are going to be um, off the system in its in total, right? That one servo controller on the right here, you might notice that's not a servo controller, that's ESXi. Um, but yeah, this servo controller measures both the grid tied stuff and the off grid stuff. Um, so, what we've got, our utility charges us 28 cents per kilowatt hour over the four years, right? And this is worst case scenario saying it was a full four years, it's not a full four years, but the consumed kilowatt hours by the house and the and the ball pump total was 73,000 so 73,029 kilowatt hours Jesus man that's a lot um, and then we got the produced solar was 86,367 kilowatt hours um, from the grid the ball pump pulled in 7,690 and the ball pumps a bit of a monster so that's to be expected um, what we sent to the grid was 16,545. So that is a 5.5 kilowatt system just bashing in power day in and day out. Right. So that means potentially what we would have paid if we had not had the battery would have been $20,449.
and that's a shitload, man. You can understand why I was adamant to get batteries. The resulting charge, though, is uh, so we got we ended up with twenty one thousand, uh, sorry, two thousand one hundred and fifty three. Take what we got back from them, which was uh, eleven hundred and fifty eight. So the actual charges over four years was nine hundred and ninety four dollars eighty five, which is not too bad. So basically, two hundred and fifty dollars a year to run the ball pump. You can't really argue with that. Plus, occasionally it's charged the caravan, plus occasionally we've used a charger to charge the battery because there's a storm coming. So there's a bit of convenience in that as well. That means that, oh, plus our service fee, so again, it wasn't a full four years, but we're going to assume it was for the, for the sake of this. 365 years times four is 1460 at 98 cents a day, so $1,430. So over the four years, the full charge from my grid provider was $2,424.85. So the total savings were $18,024. That's not too bad, really, is it? Let's face it. Um, the battery cells in the rack were $21,200. Um, 5700 was for the uh, initial kit. And bear in mind that I've, that's a derived number. I've, um, I originally bought a MultiPlus 2, uh, 3000 So I've, uh, that's, that's a little bit inflated. Um, and then the off-grid solar was about 9000 bucks. I bought $7,000 worth of new panels and I spent $2,000 on second-hand ones, so we got 9000 bucks. Which means that the whole setup so far has cost 35900 right? Now that doesn't include the old Voltex batteries, they were significantly more expensive, they have a significantly larger payback window. Um, that was me being a bit silly when I was younger. Um, they're all in the, in the caravan now, we still have them, so we're still going to get some use out of them, but they will never pay themselves off because they're in the caravan now. So that means that the current savings that we got is at 18,024, um, which is roughly 4,500 per year. So 7.9 years to pay it back. And that's not so bad. That's not so bad. So yeah, the battery itself will pay off in four and a half to five years. The rest of the equipment will take another three years to pay off. Um, and this is the worst case scenario. This is when you're like, hey man, this thing's gotta be really big. Like I need redundancy. Like. I haven't got the redundancy in that yet, but I've got redundancy in everything else, which means there's doubled up spends everywhere. If you were in scenario A, where you're just looking to offset your power, I reckon one of these things could pay back uh, with the appropriate inverter, and bear in mind the inverter could be significantly smaller and it would just continuously offset your load. Um, what are we talking, like a, a Quattro 2 5000 now is about 1200 Australian dollars. So if we were to put it in at like sort of 5700 bucks, and you cycle the battery every day, like to its full capacity, only leaving 30% in it, for example, and you could use it more, I just choose not to. Um, yeah, I reckon you could pay that back in four and a half to five years as well. So it, it is cost effective in my opinion. Um, the added convenience of being able to have like power when the grid's out is spectacular. Like every time there's a storm coming or we get a wind warning, our our power's above ground, so if we get a wind warning from the government saying that, you know, there's going to be high winds in the area, we immediately throw power into the battery intentionally. We have another charger that we use that pulls power across from our grid, grid charge side to, well, our grid connected side to this side, uh, and we offset our power using that. So, yeah, look, I, I hope that answers the guy's question. Um, he's asked me not to... I suppose I don't really ask people's permission. I just show their question. He's asked me not to show his name on the YouTube uh, on the YouTube video, so I won't do that. But um, you know, like I'll make an I'll make an effort to it for anybody who posts a comment that if you ask me a question, I'll I'll try to answer it. And if I try to answer, if you don't want to be mentioned in the video, just mention just say please don't mention me in the video. Um, I can I can hide your comment uh, after I see it if you if you're concerned about people you know. Uh, judging you for whatever it is you're doing or whatever other reason you want to stay private who cares um, anyway so I'll leave it at that I plan to get this thing hooked up to that BMS we're going to test the integration so I'll get rid of the old um, I'll move that over I love that little charger I'll move that charger over we'll pop the MultiPlus up there and we'll do a little bit of testing with the um, with that BMS down there so yeah, keep an eye out for that one. Otherwise, I look forward to the comments. Um, thanks for subscribing. I see people still hitting the dislike button. I don't know if they realize that engagement is engagement as far as the algorithm's concerned. If you hit the dislike button, it still, it still says that somebody engaged with us. So, you know, I don't have a problem with that. But if you've got a problem with what we're doing, just put it in the comments, tell us. Tell us what you think we should do differently. Like hitting the dislike button and walk cruising away sort of doesn't really help us to grow the channel or make it, make it, make better content. So if you're not happy with the content, let us know why. Anyway, thanks guys, I'll catch you in the next one.